Well, good afternoon, everyone. Appreciate uh, everybody being here on uh, short notice, but uh, we had some uh, bills uh, got sent back uh, for a little more perfection to our committee. So we're going to uh, take those up this afternoon, and I'm going to uh, ask uh, Representative Larickia to uh, open us with a prayer. What for? Yeah. Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Let's pray. Heavenly Father, thank you for another beautiful day. God, just help us to remember that all of this belongs to you, and we're just here to help to be obedient to you and to use wisdom in our decisions to help lead this state. In Jesus' name I pray. Amen. Thank you. And uh, I want us all also to keep um, uh, Representative Susan Holmes, Vice Chair of this committee, in your, in your prayers. She's dealing with some pain with her back and so that's why she cannot be here today. Um, I see we'll start right with business. I think we'll we'll go to Senate Bill 49, uh, Senator Dixon. Um, you can come to, why don't you come right here? Now, this, if if my counting's right, this is the third time you've been been I'm here. I, I, I've never heard of having to come three times try to get this bill through so i hope you i hope you uh, I, so i my my our committee here is, is is very patient but i hope i don't have to see you here again this year on this bill i know that but it's a good bill and uh i just uh, uh want you to explain it uh i guess one more time did you bring some changes to it um uh, no, sir. No, no I didn't, but I'm, okay. I'm going to go into All a little right. more detail. You uh, let, let us know what LC number you're dealing off there on the okay. top. Um, if you would. It's uh, LC 364614. ECS. Yes, Got sir. It. ECS. Okay. All right. The floor is yours. Thank you, Mr. Chairman and committee members. Uh, I come before you uh, today to present Senate Bill 49. This is part of the governor's agenda for this session. Under current law, builders and contractors must wait uh, for the county or municipality to determine whether they can provide services during a statutory time frame before a private professional uh, provider can be used. Uh, Senate Bill 49 uh, allows uh, builders and contractors to use a private professional provider uh, for plan review and building inspection. Um, immediately upon acceptance of the application, uh, regardless of whether or not the county or municipality ultimately determines um, if they could perform the service. Uh, this bill would shorten the timeline of being able to uh, use a private professional provider and increase efficiency of the building inspection and plan review process. Um, a few highlights to the bill. Uh, the contractor or builder would still need to submit a completed application uh, to the county. The county or municipality would still need to decide whether they could perform the regulatory action or inspection within the statutory time frame. The fee structure framework that exists in code does not change. Uh, the bill makes no changes to several safeguards uh, to uh, you know avoid any potential abuse. Uh, Mr. Chairman, as I stated before, the intent of the bill is only to increase efficiency in the existing plan review and building inspection process. Um, engineers, contractors, uh, and builders across the state were experiencing slowness uh, to this process during COVID, which was amplified uh, once the pandemic hit. Um, would love to uh, answer any questions if uh, there are any. Okay, uh, are there any questions from the committee? Um, Chairman Taxisley. Thank you, Senator Dixon, for bringing this bill. Uh, I consider it to be a good bill. I came, uh, I come here, I, I'm here with a background of 10 years as county commissioner. And I know in addition to the pandemic, we face times when we're just overwhelmed with a need for inspection services. So I see this as a good option. Uh, I like it that counties have an opportunity in the beginning, you know, to look over the application and accept it. And if there are bad actors that appear along the way, they can certainly remove their names as possibilities uh, to come and do these enforcement uh, inspections. Yes, ma'am. I, I agree with you. Um, and, and, you know, wholeheartedly, I mean, the, the county still has control over the process. It's just these, these areas here, you know, they still have to 
complete the application process and the county, you know, still has the review and acceptance on the end. And, and like you said, if there are bad actors, uh, you know, they, they will be, you know, can be removed from the county's uh, list. Thank, thank you for bringing this bill. Absolutely. Thank you very much. Right, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, Senator, Mr. Leader, thank you for uh, for being here. Uh, you did a pretty good job describing the bill, but you said you told us what the intent of the bill is. And since this is the third time we've heard it, is the intent of the bill and what the bill actually does the same? Yeah. <laughs> yes, sir. Great question. Thank you. Um, Senator, um, so uh, GMA and uh, ACCG, they're, they're on board with this bill. Yes, sir. They, no they've taken a position of being neutral. Yes, okay. sir. Okay. Well, at this time, uh, if there's no other questions, I see, uh, 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 I see a motion to, uh, to, uh, do pass second. All in favor say aye. aye. Oppose like sign here. None motion passes back to rules. Thank you. Sir. Good luck there. <laughs> I appreciate I hope, that. I hope they understand it as well as my committee here, uh, understand it. <laughs> I, I've got some uh, peach jelly beans that work pretty well for me. I, that I, I need I to bring use. some. I might, yes, sir. I might <laughs> let you use some. Thank y'all very much. Okay, thank you. Um, our next order of business is uh, SB one ninety five that also um, got uh, sent back for more consideration from rules. And um, not seeing uh, Chairman Mullis here, he and I talked, um, but um, uh, Vice Ch Chair Gravely is here to explain the addition to this bill. Yes, sir. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Mr. Chairman, do you mind if I get a copy of this? Uh, nope. I don't want to take one member's note. Thank you. Chairman. Taylor? <clears throat> That's another one. Okay, welcome to the Agriculture and Consumer Affairs Committee. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, I wanna thank each one of you. This bill is a bill that we voted on in the House unanimously, and it passed unanimously. This is uh, what was House Bill 645, and it was simply a cleanup that the medical cannabis, the Access to Medical Cannabis Commission that this body created for the last two years have gone through uh, hardships, essentially getting this right. We've got advisement from the Attorney General's office. We've got advisement from the lawyers in DOAS that this bill that was put together in House Bill 645 would answer a lot of the questions, would tie up a lot of the loose ends. And so we put that in here. Uh, the bill is also sitting uh, in Senate Health. Uh, but after speaking with uh, the rules chairman in the Senate, he gave me approval to put it onto this bill. Now, some questions may be uh, arise by the fact that uh, 195 is in Title II and House Bill 645 is in Title, 640, uh, Title 16. But I will remind the committee, and, and I think all of us should know, uh, that the hemp plant and the marijuana plant are the same species. So these are subjects of uh, similarity. So putting in here, both are deal with cultivation, albeit uh, in two different types of cultivation, but both deal with cultivation. We also appropriated in this house a large amount of money. Uh, Chairman Watson, after uh, sitting and having several hearings with the executive director of the Access to Medical Cannabis hearing, talking about the needs and the problems that they had to get around with the State Purchasing Act, things that we're going to be mindful of going forward the, uh, the, the ability to have this delivered to those invalid, that, uh, the invalid patients that are unable to get out of their homes to get the medicine that we legally say in this state they can have. So this was just simply a vehicle that, uh, Mr. Chairman, we have put House Bill 645 in. Matter of fact, it's my understanding um, that if there is uh, too much of a conflict in title, which I don't believe that there would be due to the similarity of the plants, that we could strike the hemp portion of the bill and it let it just be solely uh, what was in House Bill 645. Um, thank you, um, Representative uh, Gravely. Um, 
I'm looking for some questions uh, from our committee. Uh, Chairman Tanker, uh, who is uh, six up? Uh, Chairman Corbett. Hey, Mr. Chairman. Thank you, uh, Michael, for, for bringing this, this bill. My, my question is on the uh, the banking part and the credit unions. Does this, this clear up uh, what they need to be able to uh, for bank accounts, for people that just, just growing the, the the, the cannabis to be able to open bank accounts and transact with banks and credit unions? For, yes, sir, it does. And uh, thank you for the question. Uh, the, the credit unions approached us as we were writing 645 and asked to be included. Uh, they had uh, asked to, to not be included in House Bill 324 that we passed in 2019, but specifically came to us this year and asked if they could be a part of the process that they would like to be uh, included with the banks. Thank you, sir. And I'm glad, glad to have you join to uh, our Hemp Farming Act. Yes, sir. Uh, Chairman Corbett, um, Section 1 of the bill, is, is, is that portion in your bill that we passed? Th that, that portion is in 336, House Bill 336, which we passed and the Senate uh, passed uh, uh, last week as well. So we, we, we could strip it out if it if there's any if uh, if, 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 if there's an issue with it we can strip would, it out. There's would not like it. I, I think we would would be in place to do that if that would give you more comfort. And I'm at whatever the pleasure of the committee is. If the committee's okay with it, if if y'all want to strike it out, I think that we would that there would uh, that would solve any type of title question for sure. But I think that because of the fact that the plants are of the same species. You've got a similar subject. Yeah, I, I, f I feel like we do. I mean, okay. it's the same species, and it, but if, if it's some legitimate worry, I, th I think we could do that. But um, I see another question. Um, this, uh, Representative Lorraine. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And I, I was going to comment on that. I, I would certainly like to strike the hemp portion out of this because my fear all along has been that it was just a matter of time before the hemp and marijuana, I mean, medical cannabis ran together and we're being, we, we would likely cross pollinate and bring the THC level up too high in the hemp to continue to, to be able to use it. But I think that's the right thing to do. Take hemp off of this where it'll okay. just be uh, the medical cannabis. And I'd make a okay. motion that we do that strike the hemp portion. Okay. Uh, hearing that motion, do I have a second? I have a second. Uh, any other discussion on that motion? Hearing none, all in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion um, passes to uh, strike section one. Um, so now um, we have the the, um, the other bill uh, with that. Uh, we have the bill with uh, section one struck in, and are there any other questions for Representative Mike? Okay, we've got uh, several uh, representatives online. Uh, Representative Mitchell and Lewis Ward. And um, so, Representative Mitchell, uh, do you have a question? Yes, I do. Actually, I have a question on the university portion. So, line 722 to 732. And I think I had reached out to Representative uh, Gravely before. Is there a reason the universities are only allowed to study the oil itself? Um, whereas the rest of the provisions deal with oil and products. And is that something you do want to be oil and products in that section? What, help me out on the question. I, I couldn't hear it either. Could you repeat it? Uh, yes, the, the provision on universities only deals with THC oil. Is that by intent or do you want that to also say and products? And you're online. 722 to 7. 31. Yeah, that, I think if we I'm were allow, I, I don't have a problem with products, but I'm trying to be very cautious here that if we were to allow products, the oil would be the base of it, that, that the oil would give them the ability to study exactly what they needed to study for research purposes. So there wasn't a need for them to have products. Now we could add that I don't have a problem with it. Um, because all they will be doing is studying uh, what the what the licensee allows them to study, and, right. and just so the, for the committee's purposes, 
any university, the only two universities, I think there was a miss, someone misspoke in the Senate. Um, the two land grant universities, the University of Georgia and Fort Valley State, are still the only ones that have opportunity to have a license and to actually grow. And they have not accepted that yet. And so what this bill does also removes that mandate. So if they want to do it and they want to apply for the, uh, the, the NIDA designation, which would be the National Institute of Drug Abuse, they can do that. that. That'll always be there for them. But we had five other universities that said, we have no interest in growing. We have no interest in cultivating. We simply have specialties at our universities that our doctors work on and specifically would like to study this oil and report back to the lice, the, the cultivators. This is what our research found and how this affects prostate cancer, how this affects Alzheimer's, dementia. And so that's the type of data we need working in tandem with the Medical Association of Georgia, I think would be fantastic. Um, but if, if products would be available, so, and, and let me also state this, there was some confusion there. The only products we allow in this state, low THC oil would be the tincture, would be the transdermal uh, cream, mm -hmm. the gelatin capsule, and then the serene, uh, the, yeah, I forget what it's called on the top, but sublim yeah sublingual so that's all this is not adding smoking this is not adding uh, gummy bears or edibles or anything like that so those products could be studied at the university um if, if that motion comes forward i would not be opposed to it but right now i think the universities would have what they need to study the the product or the the oil the substance okay uh does that answer your question representative mitchell yeah, I'm just thinking because we have such strong kind of food science and pharmacokinetics analysis capacity as part of our university system that it might it might be something that they are interested in doing, but I haven't talked to them at all. Um, so I was just thinking in line with the rest of the bill, it would be consistent everywhere else that says oil and products to allow the universities the same oil and products could potentially give us more information about things like the topical cream that they wouldn't necessarily now be able to do. But I, I don't mind either way. Okay. Okay. Um, let council, um, uh, Higby, have you got, um, products. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Uh, let council, I think, uh, has answered your question and I think, I think we're good with it. Um, uh, representative Mitchell. Uh, I think it does. You probably couldn't hear that, but I think you were referring back to some other uh, language that does cover what your maybe concerns are. Yeah, line 709, knowledge is products. Okay, um, getting back to, to the bill, uh, any other questions for uh, Representative Gravely? Um, you got a... Uh, Well, oh, oh, I'm sorry. That's it. All right. Chairman Watson. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Uh, just a little more background on, on this for the committee. Um, as you know, we, we, we passed this law. We've allowed for this to happen in our state. Um, and they're going to start production in our state this year. We've already collected money from applicants and, uh, contracts will be awarded to those, uh, applicants that can actually grow cannabis in our state. So it will happen in this year. So we need this bill to make sure that, um, that it's regulated and controlled and um, the money has been appropriated in the budget to allow them personnel to do that. Uh, so everything is in place, but we need this bill to allow people to have access to it and to do the things that we've already told the people of Georgia that we will do. Um, so thank you for getting all this worked out. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Um, well, here, no other questions or comments. Uh, 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 Representative Bentley. Uh, what number is that? Huh? Six. Okay. okay, go ahead. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. And just to add on to what Chairman Watson stated, this bill has been worked on and, and passed, and, and I've voted it for it before, and I will vote for it today. But I, my question today, is there someone in this room or listening online that can help me learn more about this Medical Cannabis Commission? 
Um, Cause I, I heard you mention about the applicants and all that process. I'm just totally lost on that process. So if there's anyone that can help me uh, learn more about that, I would certainly appreciate it, but I will be supporting this bill because I've supported it all the way through before. So thank you. Thank you for those comments. Any other comments from any, anyone else on the committee? Well, hearing none, I'd be open to a motion. Got a motion, second. Uh, any other discussion? All in favor, say aye. aye. Opposed? Hearing none, motion passes unanimously. Thank you for bringing Thank this you. bill. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. It, Absolutely. Uh, if I could, my final comment to uh, Representative Bentley's question. Uh, any, we do have a, a website here in the state, the access to uh, Georgia Access to Medical Cannabis. You can read the uh, who the members are. They've got a year-end report that they've submitted, and it's, uh, it's an all-encompassing information on there. And I'd be happy to give her that link as well. Great. Thank you very much. I got one. We got one other. If, if nobody's in a quick hurry, Aviva, do you, have you got any words of wisdom for us here? This, this, this bill's right up your alley. I'd be honored to, to talk for a minute if possible. Okay. Thank you. No, I really appreciate it. I just have a couple of questions for the committee to consider for next year, I suppose. One is uh, one of the biggest challenges I've heard is to actually fund the hemp program. So since the applicant fees are so expensive in the medical cannabis, I'm wondering if some money can be funneled towards the hemp program. Um, the other thing that is an absolute concern of mine is that we can't, the raw hemp product, as I've said a few times, um, is not allowed according to, I think, both the medical and the hemp, industrial hemp. And I think that's an issue because, you know, it's like the difference between raw peaches and dried peaches. And the science is there when you juice the actual raw cannabis, there's so much medicine there. Um, a lot of people say the smoking and the oil is the best form of medicine, but I think it depends on the individual. And so it's really good to have the options if we want to take care of our people. And one more thing I wanna say is, I understand your fear about there being like, it's the same plant, it is. And, you know, I've been rooting for industrial hemp before there was a definition of hemp being 0.3% THC or less. I've always considered it the same plant. And my biggest fear is that we wouldn't free this plant f fast enough to help our environment with all of the environment, of environmental, you know, great things that hemp does for our environment. The trichomes clean the air when it's growing outside, it's great for the bees, it you know remediates the soil. And so my fear is that we're gonna be so afraid of medical cannabis that industrial hemp will never be free. So one more thing is that um, I also have empathy for your need to support our industries here and, and the monopolies, so to speak, because they, <laughs> I like shopping at Publix. I like shopping at Kroger, you know, but have you ever known someone who makes their own artisan bread to put out a big business? You know, have you ever known someone who makes homemade cookies to put out a bakery, you know, to put that out? So, so I think we don't need to be scared of having some kind of a home grow for, especially the folks that cannot afford the expensive, expensive oil, but they deserve the medicine. So that's all I have to say. Well, thank you. Appreciate mm -hmm. those comments. Thank you. Um, that's all the business I have today. Has anybody got anything else to bring before the committee? Hearing none, we're adjourned. Thank you for being here.